The youngest of nine siblings, Jackie and Jerez Gallagher, are twin sisters from Bishop Kearney High School in Brooklyn. Twin sisters who have gone on to become Brooklyn Queens track champions. With the help of their coach, John Lovett, a former track athlete from Manhattan College himself, and their devout Catholic faith, Jackie and Therese Gallagher continue to aim for greatness. My name is Jackie Gallagher and I'm co-captain of the track team. And I'm Therese Gallagher and I'm the co-captain of Bishop Carney track team. We got started running track by our sisters, uh, Mary and Carrie, who ran here before. And my parents encouraged us, like, they encouraged us too to run it. We were all, always athletic, so it, it wasn't a matter of like, if we're going to sports, it was just which one, and it ended up being track. The sports we played before this were basketball, soccer. We did track, but it wasn't like a real like club, it was just like little kids running around. Yeah. We have a very close family. We do everything together. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I would say I'm really close with my sister Mary, and I'm close with Carrie as well, but she's in D.C., so it's kind of different. But definitely Mary, she is very close to me. She's like my triplet, yeah. but older. <laughs> we can talk to her about anything. And out of the guys, I think it's just kind of like a regular family's relationship. It's not too close, it's not too far away, so. We get in fights, you know, like any other family, but I would not trade this family for anything. It's a great family. Faith plays a gigantic role in our family life. A lot of the activities we do are surrounded by faith. I mean, we have rosary parties. Yeah, we're the only <laughs> uh, family that has rosary parties. Everybody, everybody comes together, cousins, second cousins, third cousins, right. all come together to say a rosary for like a particular reason, whatever's happening right now. My brother had started this holy hour at our parish and so all of our family comes like one Saturday a month and we do a holy hour and faith is just like everywhere like you can't go a day or a minute without my dad or my mom including faith into the conversation. It's really the only thing that matters to be honest like that's the priority before anything else and without it I mean where would we be? We used to be altar servers now my younger brother is. I wouldn't say we're like sort of a known like part of it, but like we definitely contribute and we try to get to every parish activity that's going on. Having a parish community is very important because I know not all parishes are as close as ours is, but um, it's nice to see everyone coming together, you know, even if you don't know anyone personally, it's just great to, you know, be able to come together as a community. Personally, faith, I, I definitely rely on faith. Like, whenever I am nervous, whatever problem I have, I'm always praying because, you know, that's the only thing that's going to get me through it. And I know, you know, God will help me, you know, if I ask for it. But um, it definitely plays a huge role, and I, don't, I really, like, couldn't picture myself without it. We went to public school once in pre-K, and then from then on... If we were on the wait list for our Catholic school, and we didn't get it, so... Yeah, we went to pre-K at public school, which is right across the street from us. But then after that, it's been Catholic school. And it's always been, like, that's the goal. Yeah. Nothing else really matters. Catholic school is, like, I would put it above public school. One, discipline. Uh, it's, it's safer, I think. But also because you have to learn the faith. Like, you can't just stop learning the faith, you know, eighth grade or whatever and just leave it alone. It's nice to, you know, keep learning and, you know, just know more about, you know, faith. When you go to public school, it's like you go to CCD or an after-school religion program and it, it kind of, it would feel like a chore and you don't want it to feel like that. You want it to be included every day in everything you do. So Catholic school is definitely a better choice, at least for me. The constant exposure has definitely, you know, helped my faith. It helped me, you know, learn more about, like, Catholicism is, being a Catholic. It's really... It, I think it's very important to have it. It's like math, like if you haven't done it in a while, you forget about it, you don't remember how to do it, you have to go back and look. But having it um, every day is definitely a constant reminder of who I should be, who I want to be, who God wants me to be. We pray before every meet, whether, like, because in indoor it's trickier because not everyone's at there at the same time because the events are at different times. But in cross country, we all pray before the meet. It's definitely important 
I mean, that's basically what I rely on because there's not a meet that goes by where I'm not like nervous or like, I don't know, anxious about what's going to happen. Can I do this? Can I finish? And it's even during the race. I'll pray during the race because there's nothing else to do but keep running around a track. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely plays a huge role in the team. Yeah, but indoor and outdoor, um, since our, like, if we're not together, if our um, events are at different times, then we just you know pray by ourselves. It would just be like, help me get through this. We went to a camp um, this past summer, and I remember one of the coaches was like, don't fight the pain because it's not going to go away. If you fight it, it's going to make it worse. I would just ask to like offer it up probably like this pain's gonna go away it's just how I react to it which is gonna help me finish this race. The event that I run in indoor and outdoor is the 1500 meters. Basically my coach chose it for me. I tried it out and I really liked it and right now this season I'm running the 800 to help my 1500 next year. So I'm basically like middle distance but I really enjoy it so I think the, my coach picked the right event for me. I run the 3000 which is like the longest race of my life. And I didn't choose it, my coach chose it for me. I did the 800 freshman year, but it was just, I couldn't do it. It was so irritating, because it's tedious. Even if you drop one second, like that makes the entire, or like add a millisecond, it makes the world, like it makes the difference. But in the 3000, I have more time to figure out what move I want to make or when I want to make it. And so definitely it's, I would say I'm more of a strategic person. So that's good for me. I've had injuries this entire year. Um, cross country, I missed most of it except for our championships. But um, I was out with, we weren't really sure what it was, but my foot was just not working with me. It was pain, but it wasn't like broken. It was supposedly a, um, the beginning to a stress fracture, which could have turned out really bad, so I didn't run on it. It was hard because I, didn't feel like myself when I wasn't running. Like I felt like, you know, I didn't. I wanted to eat the same amount, but I knew I couldn't because I wasn't running. And then I got hurt again this indoor season, which was basically it was the same thing, but I just found out that apparently I have an extra bone in my foot. So the front of my foot is compensating for the extra bone. It was definitely hard again for to like miss practice because it's kind of like being away from the team and it's just like it's a whole new thing because the teammates might not look at me as the co-captain as much anymore because I'm not around as much. And I don't know, I just missed being around, but I'm back now, so it's good. If you just roll with what life gives you, I mean, I have pain in my foot, I can't run on it, it's gonna hurt me in the long run. So you should kind of like do what you're told, listen, and you'll be back as soon as you can. Running with my sister is probably the easiest thing that could have happened with this team because it's like everybody else has to go home and run by themselves. I have somebody to talk to who can understand what practice was like and why I feel so like tired. And it's easier. We do compete when we're running. Like when we're on the line, we're competitors, but if I see her, she sees me during the race, we'll give each other like a pat on the back, you know, keep going, keep pushing. But um, mainly we are competitors. I would say I'm more competitive. Even if I'm not, like Jackie could be better than me, it doesn't really matter, I'm just, I can't take it. I have to do my best to get either on the same level or past her by like that much. Yeah, I think being on the same team has brought us together. It's like having a best friend and a teammate and a co-captain that I'm always in touch with. We can always share what we think with each other. It's, there's like no boundaries. Like, you can have a best friend, but it's nothing like having your sister or your twin. We understand, like, how tiring it is with school and track and everything else that has to be done. The drive and the passion to keep going, the main motivation is college. 
because that's like what we're striving, you know, to do to like for our professions and whatever to go to college. So, but I mean, we also love running too. I want to stay fit, and it's hard to imagine what else I would be doing during that time. I don't like to think about it. I don't really know what college that I would like to attend yet because I'm still figuring out what I want to do. So there was one college that came from Connecticut to scout us, but other than that, I'm still just trying to figure it out. Mainly trying to stay like uh, near my home, like in New York. Anything with like a medical field kind of major. I want to be a pediatrician right now, but that, that could change. My coach played a huge role in my injury and in my high school career as well because he knows what I can do. I mean, I see the pain and I see how much work it's going to take, but he sees the potential and sees where I can be in this amount of time. And he's been through it. He's a past track runner. I mean, he's amazing. So I definitely, I definitely needed him to get through the injury and to get through my track career. My coach helps me in uh, working towards my goals because he's a great motivational speaker. You guys can do it, I know you can, all right? Amanda, you're the leader, baby. He was actually on the US, well, he made the USA team. He was really good in college and in high school. Had like a world record. So um, he really knows what it's like, you know, the pain and, you know, how much you want to, you know, beat your time. So. He's helped me just by, you know, understanding like what it is to go through, like all that we have to. I'm John Lovett. I'm the coach of uh, Bishop Carney track team um, and cross country team. Um, I've been coaching at Bishop Carney for the past 13 years. I'm a product of the Catholic High School, uh, uh, Powell Memorial High School, and then I went on to Manhattan College where I ran for Manhattan College and uh, was part of that NCA cross country. I mean indoor. Um, championship team. Being a co-captain has like many responsibilities. Whatever the coach gives you, like any paper, any form that you have to give to the school for like a meet entry, you have to do that. You have to encourage the team and mainly bring the team together, making sure like we're all like in sync and like we're all into it, making sure like no one's, you know, down or like doesn't want to do it, make sure everyone like is having fun. And it's important to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing because I mean the coach can only have two eyes, doesn't have eyes on the back of his head. Like if he's not there and he tells us to like whatever has to happen, like when we say it, it's like he's saying it. Motivating the team is not easy, but I mean it's just lightening the mood, it's like making jokes, uh, having just team time where it's not worrying about the next race or worrying about how this workout's going to end up. It's just trying to, like, I don't know, bond. And that can happen anywhere. That can happen on the way to practice. That can happen in school. Just to make sure they all know, like, we're there for them. We're doing the same thing they are. And they can count on us if they need to talk about anything. And when they're out there uh, training with the, uh, the, the athletes who may not be as good as them, but they're motivating them. Either in their, at, at a race meet, at a, at a meet, uh, encouraging someone working with them, and just being a good teammate. You know, when they're winning or when they're losing, they're, they're just uh, solid student athletes. They're just, uh, just phenomenal kids. Some people expect us to live to Mary and Carrie. I mean, they obviously don't expect anything from us. Like, they know us. They know we're gonna do the best we can, and they know that we're all different people, and we're gonna do our own thing. Like, it's not our family. It's more like people who don't necessarily know us, but they know of us. So it's like if Kerry ran the 3,000 and she ran like the best time, like 11 minutes, say, then I would be expected to run the 11 minutes. And it's just like, it's motivation for me because I know I don't have to, but in the end, I'm competitive and I want to. I want to beat their time, so it's a good motivator for me, but it's not the main motivation for me. I don't really think my family has expectations for us to, you know, match Carrie and Mary's times. I think it's just, they're really supportive and you know whatever we do they're always happy for us and they continue you know push us to our best. I think Carrie and Mary gave them an idea of where they think that we could be but it's not necessarily where we should be per se. Being on the track team has taught me a lot of things. Number one it's taught me discipline. You have to listen to your coaches. You have to you know do what they say because they know what's best for you. You got to run every day which can get tiring after school. I know there's times where I just want to sleep and never wake up, <laughs> but I have to go on a run. 
it's a great sport. It, you meet a lot of great friends in it, but to be to excel in it, you know, other sports you get instant uh, response, you know, instant uh, gratification. You're playing basketball, you hit the basket. It's still it's fun right away. You get you see some result. Track is a is a sport that in time you're going to get better, and um, you got to be committed. And you got to and it's it's not easy. It's a lot of hard work. But anything else, any hard work, you're going to get great results. If you follow our program, you'll definitely improve from when you first started to when you uh, when you when you finish with uh, Bishop Carney. It's also taught us what team really means. Like even though in indoor and outdoor you're running, you know, your individual event, it's still nice to have a team that supports you and you all count for the points to win the meet. So it definitely taught me, you know, what team really means to be loyal and to support each other. My goals in the indoor in the beginning of indoor season was to break 305 for the thousand. I mean, I didn't achieve that, but what I did achieve is getting used to the thousand and running at a fast pace, a uh, faster pace than I usually do for a 1500. And I also improved my time for the 800. And I've been practicing, you know, going at a faster pace. I was really hoping to break that 305, but you know whatever happened happened, so it's okay. What I would do differently to achieve that is probably eat healthier, stretch more. I never stretch, it's so bad. I'll stretch in the beginning of practice with everyone, but you know, after my workout, I won't stretch because I'm too lazy. I would also, I guess, do more tempo runs because I don't do that as much as I should. And I guess relax more too. You know, like also, you know, just take it easy sometimes. I have changed changed so much since my first year on the team. I, I've definitely become more disciplined. I've learned what it is to work hard. Like I'm tired at the end of the day, I'm not like dead, but I haven't worked this hard in grammar school. Like this is like the hardest I've worked. So it's shown me, you know, to, you know, just keep pushing. Catholic means going to Mass, going to confession, just basically trusting God and not worrying about what the world's stereotypes are or what anybody else thinks, just doing what you think you need to do, what you think He wants you to do. And I think I would do that just by, I mean, being more peaceful instead of letting things get to me. I mean, that's very easy to let other people put hate in your heart. What I would say in a prayer varies to what's going on at that point in my life, but I mean, I would just ask for the strength to get through today, to get through this workout, to get through school or test, or even just for God to guide me with whatever he wants me to do today or tomorrow. Recently, my grandma got sick uh, with cancer, and that was definitely a time that I turned to in my faith because it was like, it's scary because that type of thing didn't happen that much in my family and I just didn't really know how to deal with it. So I turned to God and I prayed, like I prayed a lot. I look up to my mom as a role model of my faith because we're like the same person, so we butt heads a lot. But it's kind of different to see how she deals with things and when I deal with things because she's more experienced and she's more I would say faithful than I am because I'm still young and growing and, you know, um, experiencing all these things. So I think it's a good role model for me because she deals with it a lot better and she knows how to turn, when to turn to God, and um, I can definitely work off of that. I look up to my sister Mary as a role model because she is a teacher and that's what I, one of the fields that I'm looking into, I'm not really sure yet, but, and she just, I don't know, she's amazing. <laughs> She ran, and even at, with Carrie in high school, because Carrie was always like one step ahead, and she just de dealt with it so gracefully. And I think that she's just one of the best people I know.
Being a good Catholic means to me, like not just doing good works, but you know, going to Mass every Sunday, you know, going to confession once a month, you know, doing what you're supposed to do, receiving the sacraments. It's important because if I'm not good now, then I'm like by the time when it's like my time to go, it's gonna be like, oh, I wish I had done that, and it's, you know, it's too late. But um, I guess the way I would be a better Catholic is to, you know, be more patient with people. I mean, even when people aren't even doing anything wrong, sometimes I just get really annoyed. It's just, it's just a bad habit. So I guess fixing that, I would just have to be more patient and more forgiving too. I go to confession once a month because it really is a burden keeping all those sins on your back. And you know, I also feel bad, like thinking about what I've done, it just, it really, you know, it kind of hurts me. So. I go to confession to relieve it and, you know, to be forgiven of my sins. And it's very important because if you don't go to confession, then what are you going to say when you, you know, you get up there and he's like, you know, why didn't you come and see me so I could forgive you? And you're like, oh, I don't know. It's just lazy. So I think that's why it was important to go. I usually pray every day because, you know, I need it. If I don't pray, then it's like, it's going to be a hard day. <laughs> what I usually do, I say, please, you know, be with me today. Um, please forgive me for, you know, anything that I've done to offend you. And just take away my fears that I've had or that I have today to, like, help me get through the day. I have had difficult times where I needed to turn to my faith. Um, I have a fear of public speaking. Like, that's my, one of my biggest fears, so I definitely turned to my faith in that and pretty, you know, recently too. I also pray for because I also have fear, you know, competing like anyone else. So I also pray for that. My dad is, you know, he's very wise, I think. He really gives me great advice, you know, whenever I have a question about my faith or whenever I'm, you know, doubting God in any way. He's always there to, you know, give me good advice and to really open my eyes to what God is doing. My role model would have to be my sister Carrie. She's done like so many things, I can't, it, she got a full scholarship to Fordham, like how, how does someone do that, you know? And she's training for the Olympics. She's also actually tutoring me for SAT, along with my um, sister, so I would have to say she's like my biggest role model, because she's done so much. If you know their parents and, and you would get, it's a, exactly what you see is what the parenting is all about. Just good, they're a good Catholic family and um, just, proud to know them. I'm proud I'm able to coach their kids.